So next up is the, the 7.3. We're doing a high pressure oil pump in it. It's just not uh, producing. So go ahead and. So first, we're going to take these two off. Uh, I already uh, took the cover off for the high pressure oil pump uh, bolt access. So we're not going to be removing that. Okay, so that brackets, we can take this off. Let's set it over here. Um, now, the first thing we need to do, we need to start getting this fuel filter housing out. So, let's see what size I think is 17, 16, 17 works. Let's see how this goes today. These are pretty easy to do. Not too bad. Just gonna have to get some of this wiring out of the way. Just that one. Got the ICP disconnected, we're gonna disconnect the oil temperature sensor. Oil line's kind of in the way. Disconnect that. Take this wastegate solenoid out too, to give some more room in here. Sometimes they're a little schnug. I've already pulled the IPR, inspect the IPR. The, there's nothing wrong with IPR. This pump just can't build over 2200 PSI of oil. Um, the other thing on these 7.3s, you have to be very, very careful. You always got to check fuel pressure. You want to make sure fuel pressure is good. If your fuel pressure is not good, you'll, if you say if you have low fuel pressure under load, it'll give you an ICP issue. You won't have any. You won't be able to build any high pressure oil. That's the first thing. That, look at this wiring. Oh my god, <laughs> that's horrible. But I didn't do that. For the record, we always want to check fuel pressure first on these. On these 7.3s. Pull this up. Have to break that. So that was a 17 or 16. These I think are 14s or 15s. Kind of working in the dark a little bit. I said someone just replaced this with some cheap pump. So that's always nice. They actually had a Dorman one in there, and the resistance was out of spec, so I already put a Ford one in there just to make sure, you know, and that didn't help. But I told we told them we can either leave it or take it, and they recommended, they, they just said just leave the good one in there. So, they just need this truck to be reliable. And those Dorman regulators, they're anything Dorman, just garbage. So don't buy Dorman stuff. Unless you don't care. <laughs> By all means. Your garbage is trash. Every time, it's always something with them. Definitely, they're like anything electronic is just horrible. Just the cheapest crap you could possibly get. That's what it seems like. Because sometimes, you know, you're backed into a corner and you got to use what you can get, truthfully, you know. And that's just how it is. And sometimes we get that way too. You know, it's like, either you use it or you don't. You don't get nothing, but... Yeah, if you could do me a favor, grab a bucket for me and just slide it under this. And then, yeah, go ahead and put the doghouse, put the seat. The seat should be in the back. 
and the nuts are on the floor. Okay. Yeah, just get it all back together. Like I said, they just changed the pump, so if these cushions are like new, we're gonna reuse them. If they're old, I'll replace them. It just depends on what they look like. So far, they look pretty good, surprisingly. Okie dokie, now we gotta get this one down here. I'm thinking about popping these high pressure oil lines off right now. Turn on it. That's fun. Let's see if I can get it with my hand. Make it a little bit easier. If you put it in the where the engine and trans meet. Thank you. Is this about to get messy down there? Those two. Okay, now we're gonna take the fifteens out. So now that we got all four lines disconnected. Let me just wind it. These are probably 13s. 13s or 15s? That's are 15s. They are definitely 13s. Huh. Can't be getting senile just yet. Crazy. It's been a couple months since I've done one of these. Gonna get on there, they're 13. Gonna pull that one out. They're pretty long. There's one, and there's one right here next to it. We'll probably get a bigger extension so I'm not screwing with it. Okay. There's those two. You can take this one out. I usually. Depends on if it comes out. Okay, oh yeah, came right out. So those are what those look like that hold this whole fuel filter housing in. Then on the back there's a little hose that you need to get off too for the, the water separator drain. It's the pipe with a piece of hose. Oh yeah. I'm set this over here. Set on my bushel of rags. Spraying fuel everywhere. like probably gonna have to grab a light because i don't think you can see crap i kind of see so you got the injection pump that's one line one line then that's the one that i was telling you for the fuel water separator you can see i'm pointing at not flipping you guys off um i don't know if this is feed or return it's one or the other uh, this one's actually gonna be feed because it's bigger so the but there's that um now next let me get you guys right here I'm gonna have to take a pause real quick. I'm okay, now I bring light. So hopefully you can kind of see where, where we're at. So we got the fuel lines disconnected. Like I said, these are generally pretty pretty easy to do. Um, what I'm gonna do next, we're gonna get the oil lines disconnected. And you're gonna usually need a special tool to do this. These are snap to connect. I usually use this. I'm gonna try these. I just bought these. So. I want to make sure they work. So you're gonna go in between like that. Let's go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just give it a little turn. Pop the wiggle easel, see? 
piece of cake. And you gotta be careful because this side's energized, this side should not be. Should not. <laughs> is the million dollar keyword. Okay, so there's those. Put those to the side. It's okay, I have a bucket under. This thing's gonna puke oil out like crazy when I take it out. So this is the tool, I got this on Amazon. It has a number eight on it, whatever that means. But it works. So next we're going to have to get the gear off. And the gear on the front is an 18 millimeter socket. Or a uh, nut, I should say. So I usually, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. So this is how I'm doing it. I have my big ratchet, 18 in extension. I go like this and I hold the engine. I tried to, like a crazy man. And it actually worked. So sometimes I'm not so crazy as it may seem. And now you can't forget the most important part of the day, the power tool. So this is the trick that I used to get it. If you use a semi-deep socket or a short, you can get past, there's a water pipe right here. Now you have to be careful when you take this out because there's a big fat washer on there and you don't want to drop it in the end. So I just back it out. I'm gonna take my ratchet off so I can feel it. And then, let me see if I can get you guys over here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Hello. So, that's what it looks like down there. Hopefully you can see. Okay, so, yeah, you can't really see. Okay, you can kind of see right there. So you can see in here. So, so you want to kind of tilt it up. Because you want that washer. You know, I'm trying to get past the exhaust back pressure pipe. It's kind of a pain when it one handed on the creaky. Okay, so you guys are gonna have to trust me on this. See, what you do is you just push the pipe down, this pipe right here, the exhaust back pressure. You have to loosen this, this is a 16, and the base of it's a 15. You wanna always counter hold it because they're usually pretty tight. And then there's two eights, pull it off, and then you're able to get in here to access that bolt. This is what the cover looks like on the back side. It's the front side, like I said, this is usually a 15, this is a 16, and then there's two eights. Really simple. So the chair in the back? No, it's in the, it should be in the back of the van. Augustine put it back there, so. Okay, now he's ready for it. Look at these flowers, these doors. This is uh, the messy part. Um, I wish I could. Let me see if I can get you guys a better spot. Because if I was watching, I'd want to see it all, you know what I mean? Okay, so. I don't know. I think I might have screwed the camera up. I'm not too sure. I use this to get it out. So, of course, yeah, something like this. Come on, baby. Snap on, you can do it. Do it, put your back into it. Nope, didn't do it. Definitely not putting it back into it. It's okay. Gotta make sure my hand tools still work. Should all get rusty. What's up, Dave? There's one. What you got, Dave? Mm, why is that tight? Um, it actually seems good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, their bill is a lot cheaper. I did not do the valve cover gaskets. Okay. They they are not leaking, and I did not have to remove them. Okay. So I did not want to. I didn't. I was going to take them off, and I decided against it because I don't. I want to make sure it's good before we do anything. Now it does need some love. It's gonna need a distributor. Oh, good. The gear is like bad. Yeah. Not not horrible. It's, it's pretty bad, so I just want to make sure that it's good before they start spending a ton of money in there. Okay. But um, it is running. It's been running since this morning. It runs great. Okay. It did have a check engine light for an oxygen sensor. I don't know what that was about. So we're just letting it run. Um, but it should be ready today for them. Okay. But just tell them we have to go through their bill a little bit because we didn't do the, the valve covers. I didn't need to. And they're really not leaking right now. Okay. But it just tell them there it is going to need like a, a distributor. Um, you know relatively soon i would say drive it for a week make sure everything else is good on it and then bring it back and we got to do the distributor because it is pretty bad okay i know it works great well because if i use my milwaukee it flickers because the the frame rate oh yeah because it flickers with it so um i found these i have two of them yeah no they work really good because they give good light and there comes the pisser 
they uh, they give really good light, and but they do go dead very fast. Yeah, is this a is GoPro item. Yeah, it is a GoPro, and it has a battery in it too. It lasts about an hour on full bright, which isn't that great, but but it it makes it really nice, so it doesn't flicker. Cause it, hey, I hate it when it flickers, cause I can't watch a video that flickers. I can't watch one. I don't expect anybody to watch something like that either. But two one for diving. Have you seen that one? Uh uh. It's fifty one hundred. And it's uh, I'll, I'll show it to you later. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. Hmm, huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, these work pretty good. They're they're a little expensive, but you know, like we did some filming last weekend, and before we'd have to go out and press the record buttons on all the cameras, and they'd all be out of sync. Oh. So I found they made a remote. You can hook five of them to one, which that's what we usually use. We usually use six, but I deleted the camera because we don't. I don't really use footage off it. Uh, you just strap it to your wrist, hit the button, bam! They all come on at the same exact time. That's awesome. Oh, so everything's synced. Uh, cool. Well, so then you don't have to go in and and um, and try to find the timeline. You know, try to set it because that's the hardest part is going through and setting everything. Yeah, but so yeah, those if you're using GoPros and you're using a lot of them for video, you seriously has a wrist mount. You just push a button, beep, and it sets them all. Right. Turns them all on, and then you can boom, shut them off. Very. Cool. Yeah, very very nice. Well, it saves me so much time because in editing it just it's so hard to get them perfect. You doing that every night? No, I, I, the last couple nights I haven't. Good. It's been nice. Take a break. Yeah, it's actually been really nice not to have to deal with that. Did you build that rack on your truck? No, I bought it. Okay. Yeah. Right, I mean, let me go tell this guy what's up. Yeah, just tell him it should be done today. Just tell him it'll be a little bit cheaper. Okay. And uh, let him know about the distributor. We just, I didn't want to start throwing parts at it just yet. You know, because I don't, I want to make sure it's good for him. You're welcome. So usually these aren't this tight to come out. I'm gonna give a little wiggle jiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I don't like to. Is it right? Yes. Okay, so thankfully this is gonna be a core now. So I really don't. You said take off just the gearbox, right? Yeah, you got the gearbox out? With the pitman arm. Yeah. The pitman arm connected to the linkage. Yes. Don't disconnect it from the box. No, just from the That's linkage. Right. All right, just make sure. And you can use a pickle fork and destroy the pitman arm. We have a brand new one for it. That's why we're in there, because that pitman arm is about ready to fall off. Okay. And then for the, to take the gearbox off, it's just three bolts, right? Yep, just three bolts. As long as you got the two lines, the input shaft, and, the and the, those three bolts, and the pit, yeah, that, you're good. Okie okay. dokie. So it was actually not that bad. So as you saw, there's two tens. There's one over here. There's a shorty. There's a long. Really, really quite simple. It's just very messy. So I'm going to go inside. And this is some, this thing don't even have partner. I think this is a standard pump. Uh, it's a brand. But I'm going to go inside and swap the IPR over real quick. And then we'll get this, get it going back in. Let me, I don't want to get oil all over my camera. That's holding me back. I can get my big. I'll just put the bolts in. So we're just gonna shove the bolts through. Hope we get it lined up so it's all good. We need to finish before my camera dies. The hope for today. Okay, it feels like it's actually right on the money. You can feel how nice and snug it is. I'm just gonna get this one started and all. Oh yeah, we're good. We'll get all this stuff done in the back there. And like I said, those are 13s. You just want to make sure they're tight. Not crazy tight. It goes into aluminum, so gotta be careful. So 
whatever. Just as long as they're tight, they're not gonna go nowhere. Um, I know it is a seven point tree. Everybody loves a seven point tree. They're actually, they're not bad. They're not garbage, it's just, now that they're old, they just, the wiring, you see the wiring on this thing? It's just, everybody's had to go in her and gets a little messy. But they are definitely a very good engine. But now that they're so old, you get all the oil leaks, the oil pans, the timing covers rot out, you know? These you gotta be careful with. I remember one time, one of the kids who used to go in this shop. Um, before we got this this building, he's like running to us. He's like, "You guys have any of those?" Like, why would we have? He broke this off. He's tying this tight, snapped off. It's like, why would we have any extra ones? You know, unless I didn't put it back on. But you know, you just have to be careful with stuff. You have to be very, very careful. It sucks, you know, you break something like that and wait a week for one of those stupid little things. Especially in the world now. And this one is a 19 and the top, this one was, a, I used a 16, it might have been a 15. Um, I'm really not too sure. I didn't pay that much attention to it. How'd it go? Yeah, good, nice play, but I don't know if it's a transmission or what. I don't know if you've heard how it drives. Mm -mm. Oh, the wheel bearing? It's, I don't know if it could be wheel bearing. Yeah, it's, it's making it's, it's yeah. loud. And yeah. It's, well, we'll see if he wants to do it, but I don't think he wanted to do it. Uh, yeah, if you if you could do that, and then um, we'll get that one done, too. Okie dokie. Come on, come on, baby. There's that one. Got the easy one in. <laughs> These ones are a little tedious because they're in such a tight spot. Give her. What's that? Mm -hmm. No. Little arky arky. Little spark show today. From the metal piece on the IPR connector. It's always nice. I always wipe my gloves off to try to, so I can grab the, the ferrule a little bit harder, or the, the nut on the line, so I can get a better grip. Yeah, that one's gonna be a pain. Up, down, up, down, up, down. These are pretty easy, you know, like I showed you, it's not that hard. You know, you just make sure it's clean, don't... The IPR, when you take it out, I didn't show you guys, but I literally just took it out, sprayed it, put it back in. You don't want to wipe it down with one of these rags, because, or with any rag, you don't want to get stuff in it. You really don't. Because I've, I've seen people with, like, the 6 liter, they do that, and it's a similar-ish style design, you know, with the Huey system, a high-pressure oil injection system. And they, they wipe down the... Um, the compartment where the oil cooler sits in where the oil touches and what it does is that that compartment feeds the the high pressure oil pump it completely plugged up the the IPR because those ones actually have a screen on them on the six liters let me just get this a little straighter and yeah so just you got to be careful with these rags and even our company that we use they I get rags with metal in them all the time it's like you know from I'm assuming machine shops or something you know, they have no quality control. It sucks. 
But, you know, like I always say, it is what it is. I mean, it is windy today. Again. Okay, I think we got it. I hope so. Tired of dicking with it? <laughs> yep, I got it. Cool. And these cushions look good. I generally change them. Since someone was just in here uh, doing stupid stuff, they looked fine, so I'm not going to replace them. And they, they won't leak. If I had a suspicion that they'd leak, I would replace them, believe me. You know, but they look fine. There's no reason to recommend them or replace them at this time. sure these ones are 14s <laughs> I'm using a 15 I just like the loose fit so I can get on it real easy that's why I use it use a 15 not 14 okay so now we're back down here the oil line I already got this one plugged in we're gonna plug this one in I just I'm gonna do this one first and it, what it does it goes through these two I do this one first so that I don't get no crap in there it's in the bottom of my dad's toolbox yeah, it's in the bottom. Look at all this wiring. Oh my god. This is so chachi. I hate that. I hate wiring like this. It just looks like crap. So, I just want to make sure this fixes it and then we're going to have to address this at a later date because they need this truck back. So, you know, you can only do so much anymore. Wow, this this is just trash, dude. Just use this crap tape. At least try to pull that off so it doesn't look like. Look at all this. Guys. The only person who put that piece of junk I or the yeah the piece of junk IPR and the high pressure oil pump in. Gosh. It just why? Why would you look at this? The loom's all melted. It's like some. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to come back with some loom real quick and fix that. So it doesn't look like a complete trash pile. That's nice. Wonderful. It's wonderful. So now you gotta remember which one is where. The white one, I think they're different. Yeah, they are. No, 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 yeah, they are. They're off center. Okay. So this one, I'm pretty sure the white one goes to the fuel bowl heater. Gosh. This, the gray one, usually goes to the oil temp sensor. This is for the ICP. That's for the ICP. Um, you know, pull this out. The black one goes here. Then the green one goes there. Okay, so I think we're done over there. Complete. Okay. Okay, okay. Again. So we're gonna get some brake clean. I'm gonna clean up this front piece up here. Get the cover on. Just wanna get this sealed up. And we're gonna use the right stuff, not the wrong stuff. So let me move you guys so you can see what I'm doing up here. See if I can get a good bite. I'm gonna hook it to the alternator. How does that work? I like them apples. Mm, yeah, you kinda kinda can't see. Okay. It's okay. Better than not silly. So I'm gonna put a little silly silicone on there. We only got a little bit of life left on the battery, so kinda got an Andre. And I'm getting a little fatty on there. That's okay. Not gonna hurt nobody. You should see what it looked like before. Look at someone smear silicone all over it with a finger in the middle everywhere. Just, they obviously didn't know what the hell they were doing. So I have this. Fans all done? Yeah, I put everything that I could. There's four bolts, but I don't know what they, where they go. They go down to the panels. And they go one, two, three, four, two on each side of the panel. I didn't take that stuff out, but that's where they usually go. Okie dokie. So I got some silicone. Yes, it looks like crap. I understand. It's not not gonna hurt nobody. Nobody's gonna die. It'll seal it just fine. 
like I said, you should have seen what it looked like before. <laughs> then that's when I was like, what? When I cleaned, when I took it off yesterday, I was like, what the? Who was working on this? They literally smeared silicone all over the entire cover, over the inside of the, the portion of the cover. I'm assuming it's the same person that got down with that black. We're gonna call it black tape. Like, uh, there it goes. This is black tape. It's garbage. It does not work. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead. Yes, I know. Okie dokie. So if I can get even on this bolt. I'm gonna rack a full, full La Cucaracha. We're gonna just go gentle on her. I don't wanna break it and break these bolts. The whole beam. Okay, it's perfect. It's all she needs to be. I'm not trying to win no torque championship. Maybe. Maybe one day. Okay, now we're gonna put this on. See the nice little smear in there? This is kind of a, these pipes are kind of a nightmare. I don't really like doing them like this. This one was already kind of funky. I think they, they bent it when they took it off because it popped right off real easy. It goes back to the... Is it a, I think this is a 16. Yep, of course it is. I mean, we have a 16 in gear wrench. Taking some stuff back. <laughs> Okay, you want to just park that over there and then pull up this one right here, jack the right corner up, and I'll show you the valves we're going to change. So Chip. Right here, jack the right rear. Uh, sorry, the left, left rear. Left rear? Yeah. It's Thursday. <laughs> left rear, right rear, 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 rear. It's all the same. So this is how you usually do these when they're a pain. You hold them up, they usually go right on. Hopefully. If it wants to be nice to me today. Lately, it hasn't been so nice to me, so. Feels like it's actually going. I'm not bumping you guys every time. My light, all my stuff's about to die. It's nice. The one thing that scares me whenever I'm done doing uh, anything high pressure oil related like the lines or the fittings or the pump is starting it up for the first time because I'm afraid those lines are going to pop off. You know, that's why you just double check them. Like I said, before you use a 15, I think it's a 15, we're going to find it right now. 15 on the base. You got to counter hold it. You don't want to bend the thing. It actually feels like a 14. That's nice. And then you're going to get on this. You're going to try to at least. I usually use my little wrench with my little hand, but that is temporarily unavailable right now. And I got the 15, of course, because I'm blinded. Okay, that's tight. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Um, we have to put this back on, so I don't forget. And I want to push this, this power wire back down in there. And there's another race car driving by. Live on the racetrack. Um, just so I don't forget about this, I, st I do have the engine cover. There's a little cover that goes here. I have it inside. There's another race car. Those are nice and tight. Okay. So next up, we're gonna fix this. This is bothering me. This isn't the right way. That bugs the crap out of me. 
this goes under here, like so. Why does it bother me? I have no idea, but it does. So that makes me feel better. We're gonna make sure these blinds are in. I said I have a weird phobia about that. We'll plug this back in. We grab the sucker, we'll suck this oil out of the belly. Nothing's died yet. That's a great sign. Alright, go ahead and convert dentist today. There's all the nasty oil out of here. Alright, let's see if I can get my flashing flashing light. That thing is full. You're gonna have to go back there. Suck that thing out. Let's see if I can do a good old. I'm already kind of already bottomed out. Bottomed out, fellas. Let me get my extension. Destroyed. Nice. I don't want to get oil on them. Be nice. Better get it on me. Yeah, we gotta suck this oil out. Okay. Got the suction. Ow. what I do um, to make sure that the lines aren't gonna leak yeah obviously you want to double check to make sure they're tight they don't they're not gonna fall off yeah I just pull on them um, I shut the hood <laughs> start it up um, it usually takes you know 10 15 seconds for it to start up it's got to you fill everything back up shut the hood and I rev it up a little bit and that's the way I check I shut the hood in case it makes a mess it doesn't spray all over everything it just gets on under the hood it's a lot more manageable than spraying all over everything and then obviously I look underneath to make sure it's not pouring oil out of there. As long as you're careful, you'll be fine, you know.
why it takes so long for it to start um, because up there when you pull the pump that top of the, the whole oil housing the timing cover it has like maybe half a quart of oil in it when you pull the pump it drains the whole it's called an oil reservoir it drains the oil reservoir yeah it has to refill it and then it can fill the pump and then the pump will start pumping but um i'll bring you guys along when we go on the test drive 